Well, I grew up here in Phoenix. Uh, I went to Tempe High, Mesa mm -hmm. Community College. Um, I've done a uh, lot of things, <laughs> but I think uh, as an entertainer, that's probably my highest profile. I've been a professional female impersonator for about 25 years, performed all over the state, all over the country, um, in so many different capacities. And I would have never done that if it hadn't been through my reputation as Barbara Seville. I look at what I do, I'm more of a comedian mm -hmm. than necessarily a drag queen. I definitely do lip sync performances. That's you know the big part of drag, probably. But as a comedian, I just love having the room, you know, right here. You know, I love it. And um, it's not one moment. It's just, it's just, there's a, there's a moment in every show where you can tell, oh, I've got this. These people are with me. And um, I get a kick out of it every show. Um, I get a high out of it every show. It's become more and more popular. It's become more and more uh, um, interesting to a lot of people. And as with anything, you know, a change comes along, people are afraid of change. And so some people who don't understand it, you know, they may be quick to defend their way of life. They think that their way of life is under attack. And that's not the case. LGBT people, um, queer artists, uh, drag queens, we're just trying to have a good time, make a few bucks. There are so many different kinds of drag. There's so many different kinds of entertainment. You know, drag has, uh, it's a part of the entertainment culture in America, and it has been for as long as I've been alive. Um, if you think about it, we've seen drag in cartoons, you know, Bugs Bunny, uh, uh, the Flintstones, things like that. It, it permeates our culture, and it's harmless, and uh, I feel that these bills are just another way of someone trying to heighten their profile. That's really what it looks like to me. I don't, I don't understand how any of it would even be enforceable. You know what I mean? Because where do you draw the line of what is exactly drag and what is just someone who has makeup on or a woman wearing pants? Is that drag? You know what I mean? It's insane. But there are ramifications because drag is a big business. Uh, you know, there are probably, uh, 10 drag brunches going on every weekend and some of those some of those venues host 200 300 people you know so regulating drag or limiting drag it's it's insane you know it's so familiar you know we've seen this sort of thing um, I feel like every couple of years every election cycle sometimes uh, people find something to be outraged about and when I've uh, taken a look at these bills, to me, the, the, the one phrase that, she, that just keeps coming to my mind is, uh, this is a solution to a problem that just doesn't exist. I don't know if, if someone's going to become the, the arbiter of drag, of drag now. Yeah, a drag inspector. Are we going to, is that, is that our, next, our next line of defense? A comparison that I've always used is, for years and years, people welcomed Bob Saget into their home as America's dad on, um, on Full House. And if you caught Bob Saget doing his show in Las Vegas, you would have seen a filthy, raunchy comedian. The same is true for any entertainment. Uh, we read the room, we read the setting, and we do a performance for that. And so what you may see me do on a Saturday night at 10 o'clock isn't what you're gonna see me do if I'm invited into a space where uh, minors are present. I don't know that drag is the most important thing in the world. That's why I was shocked that on the first day of a new legislative session, somebody has spent their time on this. I went to the inauguration on Thursday and I heard from Republicans and I heard from Democrats and I heard from uh, independents. Not one person brought up drag. They were talking about water scarcity. They were talking about putting Arizonans to work. They were talking about bringing jobs. So I don't understand why this is so important. But drag, sometimes it's a fantasy for some people. To me, it's no different than uh, dressing up as Batman, dressing up as Rapunzel or Cinderella. Um, it's, it's about creating a fantasy. It's about creating a character. It's about bringing joy to people. And I don't, I don't see a lot of harm in that. It was incredible. I've never done, I've never had an experience like that. But Did like, you get invited? yeah, yeah, I was invited. Oh, cool, that's awesome. Um, I'm almost a lifetime Arizonan. I'm a huge fan of politics. I'm a huge fan of civics. Um, so to me, it was like a geek fest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I think it's exciting that the election results. You know, it it, it tells us that Arizona 
isn't the crazy Wild West that a lot of people like to paint us as. Um, I think it, uh, it's an indicator that people chose common sense over chaos and election denying, and people want to see people in government go to work. You know, they don't want to um, have them fight these culture wars and these conspiracy theories. So, you know, I'm, I'm excited to see what happens. And personally, I, I grew up in a, in a time where Republicans and Democrats were able to work together. And so I'm, I'm interested to see what happens in Arizona with, it's, it, compromise has to happen. Uh, you called out Carrie Lake as a hypocrite on Facebook last weekend, and as they say, you had the receipts. You know, the Lake campaign served me with a cease and desist order and um, just really some really hollow threats. And I had an attorney representing me, but I didn't need an attorney to understand that these threats were baseless. You know, I literally had photos and text messages to document everything that I uh, that I said. Yeah. So uh, it was it was just it was exactly what Kavanaugh and Kearns are doing, um, which is trying to flex and get clout by othering someone, by threatening someone, by by uh, speaking to the fear or the misunderstanding that a lot of people have about the LGBTQ community, and. In this case, they mess with the wrong person because I'm not, I'm not easily intimidated.